Team eroberte den Bereich. Torpedos! Wir sind getroffen! Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at the Aegir, the brand new tier 9 premium German, well, I would have said super cruiser, but it really, really isn't. So if we look at the details here, uh, this says it is a super heavy O-class cruiser. Now the O-class uh, was a successor of the P-class, which was the idea that the Germans had as a follow-up to the Deutschland-class, which were armored cruiser or Panzerschiffe, which literally means armored ships in English. And um, that's also where the name P-class actually came from initially. And the O-class was a successor of these. These were not cruisers. These were battle cruisers. Uh, they were distinctly designed to, uh, to hunt down merchant shipping, and to be able to take on heavy cruisers. So uh, their guns were supposed to be large, but not, you know, battleship <laughs> caliber necessarily. Uh, and they were uh, their armor was definitely supposed to be able to defeat 200 millimeter armor piercing shells, but not anything bigger. So it was the uh, defeat, defeat heavy cruisers, but be able to run away from battleships things. We actually do have a um, a more faithful, somewhat more faithful design with the Siegfried uh, in, in the, as a tier 9 premium because she actually gets six guns and the Siegfried's guns under 380 mils and these were the guns that were originally supposed to be on the O-class cruisers. Now, these ships never happened because of material shortages and all kinds of stuff and the whole surface fleet not really performing to expectations and also everybody saying, well, we're going to need at least to be we're going to need at least until the 1950s until we can start, um, you know, kicking the British and uh, Hitler saying, yeah, sure, you get that. And then a couple of months later, Hitler saying, yeah, nah, you got you to gotta start taking on the British now. And uh, that didn't go so well. So these, these ships never happened. Now, the very first thing that we're going to notice on the A-gear here is that she gets, well, triple turrets. So let's let's begin with a bunch of comparisons. Uh, because we do have uh, uh, several ships here that are somewhat similar. Um, first of all, between the Eger and the Siegfried, because they are technically sister ships. Now, the, the one thing you'll notice here is that the Eger gets a very pe a peculiar ship skill. We haven't seen this skill anywhere before. This is new. This is an uh, this is a secondary overload which means that your secondary guns are reloading faster and uh, have a, high, a longer range, which is a really, really new skill. We haven't seen that before. And she gets that instead of the precise aiming that you find more as a common skill on, uh, on German ships. She also gets auto secondaries and hydro, obviously. Now, in terms of um, health and armor, the Siegfried is better armored and has, has more hit points, uh, even though not by a large amount. Now, this doesn't mean that these are battleships. They are not. They are cruisers. They are battle cruisers. They are not armored to withstand battleship, sh uh, battleship caliber shells. That was never the, the, the point of these ships. The, um, the Aegir uh, gets 305 millimeter guns, whereas the Siegfried had the originally designed 380 millimeter guns. So shorter range, less damage on, uh, on the Aegir's guns. They both get uh, the identical set of 128 millimeter uh, secondaries or auto secondaries, which isn't quite how these ships were laid out because the original O-class designs were calling for 150 millimeter secondaries plus 100 millimeter dual purpose guns, which were effectively flux or anti-aircraft guns that uh, you know could sh shoot at other stuff as well. We get neither of those, but we get 128 millimeter guns. Uh, so we don't we, in, in either ship we don't see the 150s. Uh, both get the same set of torpedoes. It's your standard quad uh, cruiser torps uh, with a relatively short range. Uh, the A gear gets uh, somewhat better AA, but um, 
concealment and concealment wise she's slightly better so that the main difference really between these two ships is in the guns and in the armor very ever so slightly so where else have we seen these guns well we've seen these guns in the odin so if we compare the odin in tier 8 and the aegir in tier 9 we see that the odin obviously being classified as a battleship actually has noticeably better uh, protection but um, the guns are round about the same. The Odin has marginally more, more range and uh, the Aegir has a faster reload with 16.5 seconds on these nine 305 millimeter guns. So this brings her closer to the other super cruisers like the Alaska and, and similar things. Now, the big problem or one of the big problem that you're going to have with the, or that I generally have with super cruisers in this game is that they're in, it's very hard for them to fulfill their intended role. Because their intended role is to take on, is to be cruiser killers, and it is to be running away from battleships. Now, we are playing on a map that is reasonably short, and we're in tier 9, which means that battleships generally have enough range to hit you pretty much anywhere in the map. So, while it is definitely works as intended when it comes to killing heavy cruisers, uh, it the, run, the whole running away from battleships aspect of the thing isn't quite as easy. So, uh, also, uh, while these are on paper, the Odin's guns, in practice, and this is per, uh, completely subjective, but I do, do know that I like the Odin and I'm very familiar with the Odin's guns, and the Aegir's guns are not performing like the Odin's guns. Um, I, you've seen what Odin's guns can do to American battleships, even without the armor-piercing cap shell. And uh, I have been playing tier 8 games in the Aegir, and it's not the same. So, they don't, they are... Uh, they don't quite feel as as punchy as the Odin's guns. But yeah, the, uh, the biggest problem that I have with the Aegir is the lack of 150mm secondaries. Because the, while the, the auto secondaries are excellent, and they have a very long range with over 6km, uh, your main weapon against destroyers, and honestly, one of your main damage dealing weapons, are the 150 mils, And she doesn't get any. Which makes actually dealing with destroyers reasonably difficult. We get into more detail about that later. Uh, the other thing that the Odin has is long-range torpedoes with 6.9 kilometers, which is very unusual for the German set. Um, the Aegir doesn't get that. It's the standard 5.4 kilometer cruiser torpedoes. So while the Aegir has once again significantly better AA than everybody else, um, it's it's a tier nine ship, right? All right, so let's, one more thing actually, let's compare to the Hinton book very quickly, which is the Tech Tree Cruiser at, uh, at, tier, uh, at tier 10, at, not at tier nine, but um, they are not far from each other in terms of survivability and armor. I mean, the Aegir had, I think about 190 millimeter belt plating, which is definitely not sufficient to deal with super heavy shells uh, of, of extreme calibers that you get into tier 10 games. And the broadside, is not uh, the the broadside firepower i would say at a, at a brawl and i have actually tried this it, i would actually say the hindenburg is more powerful at close range than the Aegir, even though they are 200 and not 300 millimeter main guns but they are, they are reloading faster she's got more of them and uh, these are german guns and they hit very very hard so uh, what does that leave us with well it's if you if you've played the Siegfried before, this ship isn't isn't completely different. And um, I might be slightly biased here because I really don't like super cruisers in game because I think that their intended role, as they were supposed to be designed, just doesn't work in a scenario where you just can't run away from battleships. Also, compare the size of these two things. Right, this is the Odin. This is a battleship at tier eight. This is the <laughs> the Aegir. This is a cruiser at tier nine. That thing's huge. So you have a battleship sized ship and a battleship maneuverability and not quite battleship firepower um, and heavy cruiser armor slightly better than the Hindenburg this is not a particularly great combination now the Aegir would be extremely powerful in tier 8 but this is a tier 9 ship and this is a massive difference so because you do get a big progression in terms of armor and and firepower or just broadside weight between tier 9 and tier 10. Uh, the Odin gets into tier 7 games. The Aegir has to stand up in tier 10 games. That is a huge, huge step. 
All right, so let's uh, but let's uh, take a closer look at the setup. You do get the choice between uh, armor, the armor improvement and the secondary improvement. Well, you don't actually have a secondary battery, so uh, the whole secondary gun specialization is kind of you only get half of it because you only get the reload time on the auto secondaries because you don't have any manual secondaries. Um, I have tried both and uh, if I'm going to be perfectly honest the uh, belt improvement doesn't make a huge difference. You're not going to get citadel very easily in this thing unless you're being shot at by things like Yamatos and if you are being shot at by things like Yamatos then this isn't going to make any difference whatsoever. So I ended up just uh, sticking with the secondary gun specialization and equipment wise. Now generally you do get uh, you do get Something for mod for slot one that helps you with the secondaries. That's not quite the case in this ship. And also keep in mind that she does not get the precise aim. So I actually I have tried a little bit with the auxiliary armament because that gets the uh, auto secondary firing range up and the AA range up. Which, given that this thing is relatively AA heavy for a German ship, is actually not a bad thing. But I ended up using the main battery mod three just because. You will spend, um, given the relative lack of armor, you will spend a lot of time at long range, and you need to get you need you need all the help you can get to get anything on target at long range. Uh, other than that, propulsion and steering, uh, because yeah, well, it is a battleship, right? Don't be fooled by the symbol. This is, by all intents and purposes, a battleship with very poor armor <laughs> and 305 millimeter guns. Um, captain skills. Now, given that we don't get the precise aim. That means we're not going to need a slightly different skill set on this. Now, you could, given that she only has two sonars, you could take the battlefield support or you can go for the torpedo alert. But uh, you don't need the fire supremacy because you don't have that skill, so we can take survivalist instead. We also don't need marksman, so we can fully prepared instead. But uh, you prob you'd probably want the close quarters combat expert, even though you don't have any manual secondaries, you only have the auto secondaries. Now, while I said that these are the same auto secondaries as they are on the Odin, uh, she does actually have a lot of them. So if we take a look at a number of these things, uh, the Odin has six twin secondaries and she gets nine twin auto secondaries. So this is a little bit of a Massachusetts sort of situation here. Um, and once again, the big problem for me is that she doesn't get the manual secondaries. Why is that such a big problem? Because the auto secondaries, while they have an excellent range, have huge problems hitting destroyers at range. If the destroyer isn't sitting still, the auto secondaries are going to miss 90% of the time because the, the aiming, um, the automatic aiming doesn't work very well against small maneuvering targets. So on a ship like the Odin, the 150s are basically your main weapon against destroyers. The auto secondaries are helping, but the amount of damage at range that you can do with with an 8 kilometer range 150 millimeter gun is uh, pretty devastating against destroyers. That is not quite the case on the Aegir. You can't really rely on your auto secondaries all that much. I mean, you're going to have to because you don't have anything else, but um, it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, okay. Which brings us to... Uh, what else do we have? The camouflage. Um, the historical camo is once again unusual here because she gives us it's it's a it's technically a battleship camo because she gives us hit points, range on the mains, and main main battery dispersion, which may be a bit of a hint that this ship is meant to be played at longer ranges, which makes sense given her relative lack of armor. The problem is that these are 305 millimeter guns. And you'll have trouble penetrating a Moscow at 13 kilometers with these things. Um, and uh, let's not start about the more tankier stuff out there at tier 10 games. Um, so playing at long range isn't really satisfying in this ship because of the dispersion and because of the relative lack of penetration power. And also um, the 305s are having a relatively dreadful high explosive performance. So. While the fire chance is not terrible, um, with a 16.5 second reload and maybe getting four out of nine shells on target, you're really, really not going to be starting a whole a whole lot of fires. But uh, if you are faced with long range gunnery, sometimes it might be the better choice. All right, for now we are going to put the seaborne assault on, and we're actually going to play two games. 
Right, so I'm going to have one game with this set, which is how you would get the ship out of, you know, like if you get the ship out of the box, it doesn't come with a historical camo, and historical camos are expensive, not everybody wants to buy one. So I'm, I'm playing one with a uh, level 9 commander, and with the free camo, well, or not, she's not free, but it's effectively free camo, it doesn't cost any gold, just silver. And then we're going to play one, um, we're going to play one game with uh, the armor piercing cap shell and the horizontal horizontal protection expert and the historical camo on uh, in a like maxed out sort of scenario to see can you know what their, what her capability is if you stick that in and if it makes a huge amount of difference all right enough talk let's fight in the first battle we are bottom tier because once again it's a tier 9 premium so you are going to get into tier 10 games it's a carrier battle and we've got montana I double iowa smolensk kitakaze and chungmu on cage epicenter uh, which is great fun <laughs> but yeah um the aa is not bad you can actually uh, do a reasonable amount of damage to 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 airplanes once again, the problem, obviously, becomes the armor. So you do have to be very conservative. Now, given that this is something that you have to do in the Odin as well, but the Odin is a TA chip and has better armor than this thing. And uh, again, don't be fooled by the uh, by the cruiser designation. This is not a cruiser. This is a battleship or a battle cruiser. Rather. So we are going to just get into a def somewhat defensive position. Also, this thing is large. <laughs> it is very easy to hit which is another problem that you have in these massive super cruisers. This is a problem you also have on things like the Alaska. So we're going to get into that little nook here and see if we can do something about the outer ring. Uh, like I said, the performance on the high explosive isn't grand. It's oftentimes, oftentimes at destroyers, especially at ranges, it's actually better to fire the armor piercing here. Now this is without the APCS, but with APCS might be a little different story. So let's start uh, taking the Chungmu under fire with the 305s and um, yeah we got one pen we got one over pen and one full pen so um, this is more than we would have probably done with the high explosive in in some and there's a Smolensk back there but I'm currently just trying to deter the Chung move from from going anywhere into the capture circle it looks like he is um, the carrier is doing a good job as well just uh, trying to get him to not be in the capture circle and um, keep him away from the inner ring but we do have fire, incoming fire from the Iowas over there. Now, in a generally, um, you, you can take some fire, especially at long range, from these ships. Uh, it's not the Iowas and that you need to be super super afraid about. It's the uh, the things like the Yamatos, the Ohios, and these things with the super heavy shells, because uh, your armor really really doesn't hold up to these things very much, and you don't have a huge amount of health. You have the health pool of a tier eight battleship. <laughs> Or of a tier 10 cruiser. So if you're in a tier 10 game, keep that in mind. Uh, the Chungmu has made his way into the center. I'm still ineffectively uh, lobbing shells over. It was a semi pen on a destroyer on the armor piercing. There is a Smolensk over there, but um, the Iowa is a more inviting target right now. So we're going to try and see if we can do something about this guy. They are holding the two center rings. Um, our destroyer seems to be not interested in in any way to get into the center cup. But uh, yeah, there you see that. This is what I mean, right? I'm getting semi pens on a broadsiding Iowa at at 10 kilometer. This is not something I'm used to in an Odin. Now the Smolensk is kind of sitting there, and I might have angles on him. So uh, Smolensk is a very good target for the 305s because he, she tends to be over penetrated. Otherwise, okay, excuse me, Iowa. I am trying. I know you're trying to back off, but um, uh, so am I. <laughs> so I don't want to be Smolensked. Uh, this is something uh, you have to be careful about because the lack of, of uh, precise aim means that you can get Smolensked relatively easily. Uh, Chungmu is popping out, so I might have gotten torpedoes away. So we do need to back up again and see if I can get another salvo out, but it doesn't look like. Okay, Smolensk is spotted momentarily, but it looks like he is going to back up a little bit, so um, I'm not going to damage on that fire, but I am definitely coming under Smolensk uh, fire by now. Or is he trying to hit the Iowa behind me? Not sure. But yeah, none of these have hit. And uh, this is, this is like I said, a continuous problem at range, right? If, you th if you're shooting at anything at 13 kilometers, uh, that's a blind shot at Smolensk, but... Um, if you're shooting at anything at 13 kilometers, you are not going to hit very much. Uh, the midway makes his way into... The, I'm not sure why, because they are leading on points, and the midway decided that he wants to throw his carrier away. 
Um, well, maybe he pulled an ergo maneuver, I don't know, but uh, be my guest. The Chumu might be eating some torpedoes there, if we're lucky, because our destroyer has kind of started to make his way in um, a little bit closer. Okay, that's the Smolensk again. If I can fire, if I can, if you see a Smolensk and you can shoot at a Smolensk, shooting at the Smolensk is the Lord's work. So, and yeah, all of these have missed. <laughs> ah, this is frustrating as heck, but... Um, uh, and, and here you see the uh, the improved secondaries in action, and the Shung Mu just, just ate a whole bunch, and I would have probably gotten the midway, so this was a bit of a waste, but um, uh, you don't get the 150 mils, which is really, really annoying when you're dealing with destroyers. So uh, there's some Shung Mu stuff coming in. Yeah, Smolensk, you can you can citadel. Uh, this uh, Shung Mu troops are not going to hit the Yugumo, so he doesn't have to be afraid. And I have got, I think at this point, we are behind on points, so it's probably go time. Just waiting for my heel to come off of cooldown, there it is, and uh, off we go. We've got Monty on the right, Iowa on the left. Uh, there is still one enemy destroyer out there somewhere, but I think he's not making any move for the cup. So we're going in for the kill here. And yeah, keep in mind that your secondary range is round about somewhere of six, six odd kilometers. So we should see the auto secondary start opening up. Now, against battleships, these are actually very, very good auto secondaries because um, because, well, they're harder to miss. <laughs> but uh, also they will shoot on both sides simultaneously. This is also something to keep in mind. So you will start um, lobbing a... You're not going to do a huge amount of damage with these things, but that's not the point. You are going to be setting fires eventually, um, and you will be lobbing just... You see them opening up on both sides at the same time. I just want to get into torpedo range. With an Odin, I could have already torpedoed here, but... Um, uh, the Monty seems to be somewhat aware, at least, that I've got torpedoes, so he's the bigger threat with these big guns, so I'm going to nose in on him a little bit more. But you do also need to... Um, you do also need to give a little bit of angle for the secondaries to open up. Alright, so tops away at the Monty. Yeah, so you can take one or two salvos from the Monty, but that's it. Okay, so Montana is down by the secondaries, and uh, the Iowa is probably going to be dead before we can make our way there. Yep, Freddy takes him out. Uh, yeah, but you see, you see how quickly your health melts away if you're doing this kind of maneuver. So while we are um, effectively just just going to be waiting for the uh, for the timer to tick out uh, and wait for the other destroyer to be spotted somewhere, yeah, he's on the other side. So maybe maybe our cruiser can take care of him over there. Uh, yeah, you you are a battleship. Yep, Donskoy gets the Kitakaze. You're you're a battleship with a ve you're a German battleship without manual secondaries. And with a reasonably poor armor. It's one of the poorest armors in the upper tier German battleships, because it is a battle cruiser, really, at the end of the day. But you know, we've done we've gone second in a team in a tier 10 game, which was not bad. And um, we have definitely uh, done our part as much as that is concerned. So what does that look like if you put a maxed out setup? And you put the historical camo on, remember, better precision on the mains and longer range and more hit points, and we put an armor-piercing cup shell full-on um, decked out commander onto this thing. Let's check that out. And as luck would have it, we are actually in a top tier battle, where we are, with, so it's a tier nine game. We've got Iowa, Izumo, Northkal, Shapayev, Mogami, Yugumo, and Tashkent um, in, once again in cage, but this time it's center control, not epicenter. Um, yeah, something like a North Carolina, if I see that in an Odin, it's it's like oh food. Uh, in this thing, not so much. You will you will more often more struggle against uh, these kind of things because once again, I, it's it's just an impression. I don't have any numbers on this, obviously, but it feels like the three or fives on the A gear are less powerful than they are on um, than they are on the Odin. Alright, uh, given the general cup aversion that um, people tend to have around here, uh, I'm going to get actually in a relatively aggressive position next to the island and help the Östergötland cup because I don't think any of the battleships is going to be want wanting to get anywhere near the capture circle. There's actually a good island in the middle with uh, Bowen battleship positions and I'm kind of compl contemplating to go there. But uh, you are getting crossfired quite a bit, and um, once again, you're not in a you're not in a very tanky battleship. You're in a very squishy battleship because it's a battle cruiser. Okay, so this is probably about as far as I want to go. And surprisingly, we are cupping. I mean, there was a Tashkent on the enemy team. These things are fast, 
And there's an Iowa for us to shoot at, so let's uh, let's start with that. And we're gonna keep an eye onto the right flank and see if anything comes around there. Um, that wasn't terrible. Uh, there's a Yugumo, and there's the Tashkent. So uh, that I would have expected him in the cup a little earlier. Okay, I'm not sure where the Yugumo is going, but he doesn't seem to be interested in the cup either. And uh, right now I don't really have something to shoot at other than that Iowa over there. Oh, nope, never mind, there's a Mogami. Okay, Mogami's got Torps, so back off, back off. Yep, there come some Torps. These were probably Yugumo Torps, because the Mogami, so the Mogami Torps might still be incoming. But yeah, against something like, um, that's why I'm putting the Hydra up, against something like a Mogami or a North Carolina, you would expect to be very devastating. And so let's line up the NC at nine kilometers and get some shots in. And the auto secondary is obviously trying to, and yeah, look at that. Three, three semi-pens and a bounce and one full pen. Um, the, the auto secondaries are going to open up at the Mogami, even though they can't actually hit the Mogami because it's an island in the way. But I am also getting shot at by the Izumo now. The North Carolina is stopping. He doesn't want to get any closer. So uh, I'm just dodging his, dodging his shells there. And uh, there is also still a destroyer out there. But, you know, we're holding the cap. So, uh, you know, we don't really have any kind of urgency to do anything right now other than dodge shots and survive. And yeah, once more, like an average result shooting at the North Carl with the 305s. Remember, this is with the APCS skill. Uh, Freestand is coming around and um, I'm going to give him some cover. Obviously, Mogami is a bit of an issue for someone like in a Freestand, uh, but also Mogami has Torps, so I don't want to... I don't want to uh, nose out too much. And these two are keeping the island between themselves and me, so my secondaries are not going to do a whole, a whole lot. And I am coming under fire from the Tashkent. The Friesland is smoking me up, which is uh, very nice of him. Thank you very much. Tashkent sets me on fire, regardless, because blind fire and because the ship is so big that it deserves its own postcode. So I'm going to try and get some shots, off, uh, shots out at the Tashkent. Uh, Mogami is still shooting at us. And I am probably visible with the smoke, but I don't want to consider. I don't. I don't want to damage on a single smoke with uh, si uh, with a fire, with a single fire with Mogami and Tashkent shooting at me. So I'm just gonna try and nose out a little bit and see if I can get sh shells over that island nook there, while keeping it between myself and the Mogami. This should be enough. So I'm just gonna heal up a little bit, and then the next. Uh, now the now the secondaries are opening up and they are you know, racking up the damage. But I have him now in my primary, so that should be the end of the Mogami. Yep, there he goes. And then we can back off again, because we are reasonably low on health, and we still got a Tashkent and uh, Nizumo shooting at us. And as expected, the Mogami is going to have torpedoes away, which isn't going to help him, because there's an island. So I'm going to try and hit that Tashkent over there. But um, I don't know where the other destroyer is. Yeah, one over pen. Okay, that wasn't great. Uh, what else do we got to shoot at? Izumo on full health. Okay. Uh, he's sitting behind an island. I think he's actually inside the capture circle, but he is, he, he is um, well, well and truly outflanked, and they haven't gotten a single point of, uh, of a single points income right now because they haven't killed anybody. And um, while I am reasonably low on hit points, I, w I want to relocate a little bit to get uh, better shots at, at people. And of course, the Izumo immediately starts opening up again at me. And I'm going to dodge under these and get the rear guns around. Even something as um, as notoriously badly armored as an as an Izumo is not necessarily easy to to kill with this ship. Uh, so we get semi pens uh, with with the armor piercing. Um, well, there we go. That was a bit better. Once again into the smoke and um, activating the auto secondaries. But I'm not sure if the Tashkent is in range. I think he is. Or, or they, I think they are just opening up at the Izumo instead. Okay, I'm gonna damage con that because I'm on low health, can't quite lob it. Yeah, I'm getting secondary hits in onto the Izumo. And Tashkent is, I'm not sure what he's doing there. He's just sitting broadside on trying to trying to set me on fire again. Uh, that was a full pen, nice. See, this is what I mean. You you oftentimes actually get, um, get a, a reasonable number of full pens even with the armor piercing at longer range and at sturdier destroyers so it can often be actually more beneficial to fire the armor piercing okay i don't want to be on fire right now i just want to kill the tashkent he seems to be lagging around a little bit so that shot that salvo should take care of him that was a nice dispersion yeah there he goes and that just leaves the one destroyer what was that a yugumo or something that has been uh, bimbling around somewhere on the outside i have no idea where he went 
and there's one cruiser left on the other side. So that's pretty much the game decided. But as you can see, um, even, even if you're top tier, and even with the historical camo and everything maxed out, you are losing health reasonably quickly. So play this ship, if you want to play her, play this ship much more like you would a German cruiser than you would a German battleship because of the, well, because it's a battle cruiser and it has the, it has the size maneuverability of a battleship, but the health and armor of a cruiser. So <laughs> it's kind of the worst of both worlds in that regard. Uh, yeah, that Chapayev is dead. Uh, that just leaves the destroyer. But uh, yeah, uh, is this a great ship? Well, I mean, you do know that I like German ships. Uh, personally, I am not convinced. The same way that I wasn't convinced about the Siegfried. Uh, the biggest issue for me is the tier 9 matchmaking and the lack of manual secondaries. And that also irks me slightly historically because the old class, as far as I've read, should have had 150mm secondaries. But um, that makes dealing with destroyers reasonably difficult. And you, so you, you don't have the health and the armor to push into concentrated fire like you could do on a Friedrich der Große or in a Großer Kurfürst. You don't have the punchiness at range with the 305s. And um, yeah, you don't have the manual secondaries to deal devastating damage to destroyers. The auto secondaries are very nice. And if you can get yourself into a position where you can abuse them, and uh, just, you know, unload at enemy ships without them necessarily being able to shoot back at you. That would be good. But these kind of scenarios are exceedingly rare, especially if you're getting into yourself into a tier 10 game. Uh, the AA is decent, but overall, um, honestly, I don't feel this ship. I think if she was in a tier 8, she would be great, just like Odin. She would be, a, she would be equivalent to an Odin, but in a tier 9 matchmaking, uh, you're gonna have re you're gonna really have a hard time um, actually racking up large damage numbers and doing what a German ship is supposed to be doing, which is you know to get in close up and personal. Well, that's the A gear, and that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.